Excuse me. Oh, hello. <laughs> Pardon me. I was taking a sip of my ginger ale and I went live. I don't know how to get rid of this banners thing. Anyone know how to get rid of it? Please tell me no. <coughs> I'm told you can't see it on that end, but please let me know if you can see the banners thing there because I don't want it to be down there. We need all that screen down there as much as possible. So hello, everyone. Welcome in. Thanks so much for popping in. Really appreciate it. What's up, Jacob? How you doing, bud? Um, we're here for Don't Sweat the Lego Technique, uh, Series 2, Episode 2. Um, we did Episode 1 last night with Rick Brickham. That you can find in our uh, previous videos. There's a feed there for um, all of our videos and whatnot, the Don't Sweat the Lego Technique. Uh, has its own little series and whatnot. What's up, Matthias? What's up, Jacob? How's everyone doing? Matthias is in here. He'll be here Thursday teaching us how to do all this this Lego stuff. But uh, Rick, uh, there he is right there. Uh, hey, Brandon, what's up? Um, Rick did a great job last night. It was fantastic. We did a little bit of Q&A. Q &A. We went over some of his digital builds. We went over some of his physical builds. Um, he's just a brilliant designer and he's a fun guy. I mean, uh, he's a really fun guy. Uh, I had a great time chatting with him. He's literally the, the, the guy who got me started, uh, doing, uh, hello, Costa Rica. What's up? Uh, hello, Adnan. There's the gentleman who's going to be coming in today. Um, UV, UPV, give him a follow. Once I add him here on the live stream, you'll be able to go boom, 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 boom. What's up, Miguel? How's it going, buddy? That guy's building a supreme mock right now. It's amazing. I keep getting the photos. They're awesome. Um, shh, I won't tell anyone if you don't. Um, anyways, yeah, Rick was fantastic. He walked us through some of his builds. He does these uh, amazing uh, digital builds, but he also uh, does some physical builds. But these studio builds that he does are amazing. He does uh, the Psycho House. What's going on, everyone? Thanks so much for joining. He did the Hellraiser Cube. Um, there's just, he did so many beautiful things. I recommend checking out the episode. They're all available on our previous things. And pardon me, I apologize. I'm working with a new... Um, a new tripod, and I, it was last night. It was the first time, so I don't know. I don't know how well it's working out yet, and it seems a little high, but whatever. It'll get better once we add Adnan on here. Um, so yeah, speaking of Adnan, UV UPV. That's the gentleman we will be um adding on today for our series two. I'm so excited. I I mean, I keep uh the first. It's weird because when I I think I told Kelly Bartlett this when I first. Um, started the, 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 the Don't Sweat the Lego Technique series is that uh, I wasn't sure that it was going to go off, so I was only excited when we actually started doing episodes. Um, and I think that's what's finally kind of starting to hit me right now is that I have excitement. Uh, I, was, I was apprehensive for a couple of weeks because I wasn't sure. There's, you know, you never know what's going to happen. Life gets in the way. COVID gets in the way. Um, you know, anything, any number of weird, crazy things, weather, um, going on in the world, get in the way. And we were able to pull off 25, um, pull off 25 episodes of series one, um, without a hitch. It was great. It was fantastic. <laughs> Every episode was phenomenal. And, uh, and here we are now, uh, and walking into series two with episode two and with none other than that guy right there. Um, Adnan who checked in here. Hold on. You see, I told them I had I, I had some look at look at that sig fig, man. Come on now. Look at that sig fig. That's a beautiful sig fig right there. He <clears throat> does those things digitally. He's gonna teach us how he does that. And look at all these things. He did this one today. He threw this one up today. The Beastie Boys. Come on now. Come on now. Look at that. It's licensed to ill. Boom. I remember buying that album. Um, the, I think it was like the week it came out. I bought it for my next door neighbor. I think it was his ninth birthday. His name was Adam Strip Matter. If you're watching, bud, how's it going? I don't know if you're any, where you are in this world. Um, but I bought him that album on cassette and, uh, this album, bought it for him on cassette and, uh, his mom promptly returned it to my house the next day and told me that they didn't allow that kind of trash in their home. So... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, so I thought that was amazing. Uh, I, I, I inherited the album. I have, I had two of them. So, <laughs> uh, anyways, that's my little, my little tidbit of, of, of Adnod's, uh, design here. The little beastie boys to license to ill. I have some history with that. It's great. And yeah, I'm old. So there's that. 
Um, so yeah, we've got Ed Hatch today. You guys ready? We're gonna we're gonna jump in. We're gonna chat with him. He's gonna he's gonna give a little bit of a history of of himself with Lego. Maybe a little bit of himself. Period. Um, and then um, we're gonna we're gonna chat about what he's got going on with uh, with Lego. And he's got some really cool things going on. I mean, clearly, you know, if you've seen his his page, he's got all these albums, right? We're, and we're going to go through a lot of this stuff, but he has like, um, he, if you go deep into the page, he's got some Lego ideas stuff. If you go even deeper in the page, hold on a second, where is it? Oh boy. Well, I'll, I'll have you show it to everyone. Uh, I would, I, man, you've posted a bunch. It's awesome. Uh, well, there's, here's, here's one. Look what he did. <laughs> There, he did a Knight Rider mock, man. It was so dope. So super dope. Anyways, we're going to chat with him coming up right now. So, you ready, buddy? Ready to go, buddy? Let's do this. Whoa, Musk is trying to go live with us. Antoine Musk. Ooh, send me Bitcoin, bro. Send me Bitcoin. Whoa, there you are. I love it. Well, hello. How's it going, my friend? It is so good to see you. It's going good. It's great to finally be talking in person. Yes, yes, absolutely. We got, we've had a, a little, a brief, a, a brief facial for a moment. Uh, and then that, we, we've been, of course, chatting for <laughs> quite some time. Yeah. We've um, been talking. Here we are. We've been talking an like extraordinary amount, I would say. What's that now? We've been talking with each other like an extraordinary amount. I, 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 we've never like spoken face to face yeah yeah i would say that we were literally like i mean messaging jokingly before we even came on here <laughs> because we're like uh little girls in um a uh, uh, study hall passing notes kind of deal. so um, exactly. <laughs> so uh, for those of you that are familiar i'm sure more people are familiar actually with with adnan than they are me but this is adnan down here uv upv uh you see it up there Pop down, give it a follow. He's the gentleman behind all of these brilliant designs uh, that I just showed you. If I can get my phone to work with me, all those awesome album covers that he does here. Now you're in New York right now, are you? I am. I'm in Brooklyn, New York. Yes. Do you live? Do you live there? Yep. Yep. I'm okay. Been here um, for going on eleven years now. Oh wow. Okay. Okay. Um, where were you prior to that? So um, before that, I was in Pakistan. That's originally where my family's from. You know, I was there for a few years after I got married. Before that, I was um, actually in Boston. I've been moving around like all over the place. But yeah, Me New too. York <laughs> is now home. Right on, right on. Cool. Yeah, because I know that we chatted one time when you were in Pakistan, and I was like, Yeah, what? What's hot? It's gotta be a strange time there. Cause I think I was on a live stream too. And I'm like, what is, it's gotta be a really strange time for you right now. So yeah, uh, yeah. very, well, it is an honor to finally, uh, finally catch up and do this. We've been chatting about this for, for quite some time. And, um, and of course I, I, on my personal page, the, the blockhead 23, um, Ed and I did, I did a featured profile of him a few, what, a couple months ago. Um, and, it was, it's just awesome. It's, you, you go through Adnan's uh, oeuvre, uh, if you will, on IG, and it's never boring. It never gets old. In fact, I like how you've switched up a little bit how you're sharing things. Hey, Rick, there he is. He's, he's back in for some more. He was here last night. Oh, um, Ferris Bueller, you're my hero. <laughs> I like that. Uh, <laughs> um, going to be getting a lot of pop culture references today, so yeah, you're up. <laughs> I'm revved up, man. I'm a little bit of a pop culture dork myself, so I think we geek out on that as well. Hey, Marcus, what's going on, buddy? Um, hey, right. Tanner, what's going on? Um, everyone's popping in all over the globe. I love it. I love it. Um, so here we are. Everyone, this is Adnan. Meet Adnan. Boom, boom. Hello. Greetings from Germany. Greetings from Oregon. Hey, what's up? Hello, L Instagram. <laughs> Not what Lurking. you expected, maybe. <laughs> I love it. Did you see? Did you see uh, Rick's entrance last night? By the way, say again. Did you see Rick's entrance last night to when I brought him on the live stream? Because I I, I went a little little long in the tooth in the intro, and he fell asleep. I believe. <laughs> I was expecting frozen Rick, and we get like snoring Rick. When he does frozen Rick, it messes me up every time, man. Dude, he and he knows it, and he That's knows amazing. it. 
Oh, that's amazing. And he knows it's a skill, so good on him, man. Yes, yes. All righty. Okay, so let's get to the meat of it, my man. Perfect. Um, let's, uh, so let's, let's go deep, deep, deep uh, into the history here for you. What, when did you really, I mean, do you have the history like everyone else? You were a kid, you went into the dark ages, da, 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 all that, or what do you got? Yeah, um, for me, my dark ages, I would say, started in my teens. But as a kid, you know, I was super into Lego. Like, that was just mm. my thing. And my brother and I, he's in here in the live stream, Amec. Um, How's it going? He and I used to build together all the time, you know, and it was that compatibility uh, with building. And then we each collected different sets. So then we had more pieces that we could create our own stuff out of. I think it was that kind of thing that got me really into Lego at an early age. But then there was a Dark Ages, came back to it. Um, actually, I started teaching Lego robotics. Wait, you've told me that before. You have told me that before. This okay. Is, uh, yeah, this is one of the first gigs that I got when I moved to New York. And I was teaching Lego robotics and I just, you know, uh, got into it as a result of my students. Hey, you're using the mug. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I, I am using the mug. I cleaned it and everything this morning. <laughs> it's, it is. I, uh, it is I used it last night and it, and everyone was like, it's so difficult to drink from it. It is, and you just have to know where to drink from it. You drink from, you can't drink from the sides. It has to be one spot, one spot alone. <laughs> and in a few days, if you start letting your mustache and beard grow out again, you might have another issue there. Yeah, I know, it's gonna be terrible. This really <laughs> restricts me in terms of marks. <laughs> I, know, I know the feeling oh too well. <laughs> I, um, I I told you, because my town, so I, you know, when she goes out of town, I, I trim I trim the lawn, you know, because like I like you know like it's like a spring boom. I want to start over kind of deal, right? Uh, I, every I like it may not look it, but I can. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything, um, but yeah, it for me it is. Uh, I it just I like to have the the clean and it, it weird. I do it at the weirdest times too. It's in the dead of winter <laughs> it's when you want to do it that's the right time to do it but yeah, yeah i'm yeah. teaching so, okay. robotics just uh you know yes <laughs> to, to gently meander um back on track i was teaching lego robotics i just kind of got yeah. into technic actually technic really stole my imagination at that point and um i had done a little bit of technic when i was you know younger but when you get into technic as an adult i feel it just, you know, like there's a whole different building uh, strategy and mechanism and just attitude towards uh, mock making. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. I still am really interested in kind of actually the um, the merging of Technic and, and regular bricks in, you mm -hmm. know, any kind of mock building. I find it really interesting actually that they are cross compatible in so many ways. It actually encourages this kind of, not even snot, but anti snot <laughs> building uh, right. concept. And yeah. yeah, I just love it. So yeah, that's when my Lego <clears throat> kind of uh, adult uh, fascination began. A fall situation began. And um, I started collecting a few sets. You know, again, my brother really helped me on this path. I think um, we got some Star Wars sets, you know, one of the early ones. And oh, yeah. Those were just kind of. Uh, you know, again, a, a very interesting new look at what I call new generation Lego, where you mm -hmm. have these new pieces, you have new elements that are allowing much smoother and like more interesting uh, building uh, at certain scales, for sure. Right. Now, um, <clears throat> so you say you had your dark ages, just like <clears throat> most any teenage boy uh, did for some reason or another. We don't know why. For some reason, there's a theme. Teenage boys, well, they go into dark ages for In my case, I think our Lego was just given away to some relatives or, oh. you know, it was donated oh, to was another cause uh, because it was mm -hmm. thought that, oh, you know, you've outgrown it now, which made perfect sense at the time. And I think it's something we all kind of believe at oh, a yeah. certain age. Although, we, you know, we don't play with toys anymore, but take it from <laughs> me, man. Like, play with toys as long as you can, as frequently yeah, as you can. You're younger. 
Man, my mom, I had, you know, I had all the Lego, I had all the Transformers, I had all the G.I. Joe, you know, yeah, in the 80s, you know, 70s, 80s kids, uh, you know, um, had all that stuff. Mask, Mask was one of my favorites oh for my all God. the other. You're talking about I mean, it's like, a, there's a whole world of these amazing 80s toys, cartoons, movies, TV oh, show, God. I mean, just like everything you can think of, music, mm -hmm. uh, everything was dictated to a certain extent back then. Um, <laughs> by how successful it would be on MTV and, you know, how well the kids would like it. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. And Mr. Brickster just did get my my inference there. Uh, for me specifically, I wonder, wonder why teenage boys um, had a tendency of dropping out of Lego, and that is because teenage girls weren't so hot on the, uh, <laughs> on the Lego. So you told them you played with Lego, they didn't really listen so much. I got, I experienced that a lot myself. Um, <laughs> but I think uh, those so, were really the dark ages when Lego was misunderstood, and it wasn't actually, you know, there was no Lego robotics. People didn't understand the concept that you can use it to do really big things like you can teach a lot of interesting stuff you can um mock wasn't a big a thing mocking wasn't it was a thing of course people were of course building their own stuff but um it wasn't a mainstream thing you did of course you didn't have social media you didn't have the internet but you didn't know people were yeah. doing these kind of things had they had the, the know-how to utilize these different bricks. They didn't even have the books out at those point, you know? These, all these things are within the last 25, 30 years. And you make an interesting point that there was a transition period at that time as well for Lego and for uh, the demographics of, of the Le Lego uh, buyer and um, audience or what have you. And in Lego, that's when Lego had quote, quote unquote, their dark ages as well, because they were, they were a little sunken until um, Star Wars and what was the other? Was it Ninjago? Uh, of course, helped out, but there was one other line with along with Star Wars that really popped them back up. You know, they were they were a little saturated in markets that they didn't know anything about, um, and yeah, they did what was the bread and butter. You know, franchising to establish brands and like attaching on to existing stories. Mm -hmm. I think that's always a valuable uh, proposition. Oh. And you know, all my work is based on it. It's all I'm doing is <laughs> I taking say, the stuff that I love that's out there and yeah. you know, repackaging it. I'm not doing any heavy lifting in terms of design or you know, figuring stuff out. It's really just, uh, I think there's a value in um, yeah. when you join forces. And I think, as you mentioned, that's, uh, that's the Lego Renaissance that we're living in now. There's so many communities, understandings, attitudes, perspectives coming together uh, about Lego. And it's, yeah. um, you know, it's really interesting. It's well, yeah. And this, I had a chat with this. Sorry, we're getting a little existential here, but we're not, we're, we're this is kind of, we're doing an open form uh, chat on the first episodes. Uh, for those of you that are just tuning in that didn't, weren't here for Don't Sweat the Lego Technique Series 1, we did these kind of intro videos um, before we actually started the episodes. Uh, with every builder and this is where we decided to kind of episode one for everyone's going to kind of have that vibe and then work our way into more of the technical talk and whatnot and of course we'll have that in here as well but we're getting to know Adnan a little bit because not too many people are familiar with him on this channel uh, I know no one a lot of anywhere I'm like a total <laughs> okay. adult. I don't know and, I don't um, you know we I'm just way out of my comfort zone putting my face you know on you know camera what? but for I, you buddy I got out I, of my I, PJs. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's so kind of you. You know, it's it's funny. I I I have, I've been told that I've I've ripped people out of their comfort zone a couple of times. So I, I appreciate you doing that, and and you've helped it's me. Not at all a bad thing. What's that? I said it's not at all a bad thing because good. I think any level builder will say that within parameters, you know, you find a lot of um, creativity. You kind of, oh, sure. when you find a problem, that's when you start, you know, using your brain and solving it. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, with a lot of Lego builders, there's a lot of solitude as well. You know, there's, there's a lot of people that like to build uh, in the quiet or by themselves or not. You know, there are, there are a lot of people that they're pretty reclusive. And I, and I totally respect the heck out of that because I used to be that way myself. In fact, for years, I was behind the scenes kind of not chatting with anyone about all right. this stuff. So, uh, lurking, you know, doing the whole lurking. Uh, it's coming. Kind of so, okay, real quick, 
before we do go forward, forward uh, this is Don't Put the Lego Technique Series 2. This is Adnan right here, uh, UV, UPV. Give him a follow. Hit the little button thing here. Pull down, give a follow. Uh, he's phenomenal. This is all of his artwork right here. Not all of it, but a fair amount of it. He does all these awesome album covers. And he does more, but we'll get into that a little bit here. Um, now, if you do have a question, for Adnan or myself or regarding um, Adnan's work or back to break or whatever, please try to utilize that little question bubble down there. Um, I don't know if, if it's if I'm pointing to the correct side. Maybe it's on this side over here on your screen. Who knows? People tell me they don't see where it is. Yeah, that one. <laughs> the question bubble. Uh, throw it in there because um, you're the first person to actually help me do that. I pointed to it. I don't know how many times. It's, you know, it's like one of those little uh, quirks that I think you pick up when you see your face on TV. It's like, oh, wow, I can, like, touch the corners. Help! Help me! I'm trapped! I you know, the other day was so I was like, but I still couldn't point. I still, to my left, my, my, my left arm, still no control over it because I'm a righty. I was trying to point to the Home Alone house to someone, and I was like, it's over here I'm, somewhere. <laughs> I'm, like, really baffled by this whole process because I expected everything to be reversed. And I'm like, you know, upside down. No, like because it's the selfie camera. Oh, right, right. Yeah, no. Can I you mean, read oh, the wait, stuff my, on my screen? My, mine's backwards. Oh wait, are we? You're are upside we reading down private? for me. Like I can't read lines on your shirt. Oh, I have. Yeah, well, it's covered right here. But we're not reading private stuff in your background, are we? <laughs> My I'm background cool. is the. I was giving away. I was giving away the password in the live stream the other day, and you were the one telling me. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, that's a little different, buddy. That's that's like you know just numbers. You can pretty much. I, know. I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so anyway, oh. <laughs> getting, but yeah, trying. my background. Since you mentioned it, this is um, yeah. this is a rendering of all the colors in studio, like the Lego program. So when I take an album cover, I can take an instant reference for like certain uh, colors, like if I'm trying to duplicate them, because that's right. the exact way that the color will render. Uh, so that's a very useful kind of work tool, essentially, that I use as my background. Well, so that, that uh, leads me to a question getting back to when you got back into Lego. When did you, like, when did you, first, when did you get back into Lego? And then following that, <laughs> excuse me, when did you start? kind of doing, getting involved with the digital design. Okay, <laughs> so this is around, with my hands. <laughs> this, this is around um, maybe six years ago or something. So, sorry, someone said I don't know what to do with my hands. It's just, it's from Talladega Nights you know, and he's off. <laughs> build something, build Lego. That's what yeah. your hands are there for. Um, um, so it's six years ago, you say? Yeah, I was, this is about six years ago. Um, like I said, I start, when I started doing the Lego robotics class, it was the first time I actually had any um, interaction with Lego digitally because you have to program the robot, right? So I used mm -hmm. the NXT software and um, the RCX software or whatever, um, the earlier program that they had. Now it's WeDo and Spike and all this other stuff. But anyways, I just got into this idea of oh, software, Lego, there's a, there's a relationship there. And I tried out LDD a long time ago, uh, but it wasn't until I picked up Studio. Uh, is Lego Lego Digital Design. Um, My bad. Design. Lego Digital Design. Yeah. That's right. I think, that's what I'm here for. I do get you, Tanner. <laughs> and um, NXT and RCX are like the Lego robotics um, softwares that you use to program a robot once you make it. Anyways, I got into Studio uh, just a, a year or two ago when I was designing that kit, a mock, the, the Knight Rider mock. Oh, wow. That was your, so that was your first one in studio? That was not the first thing I made in studio, but that was like the first big project that I built physically. And there was like this weird building technique that I used to try and create that. It was like a lot of technique yeah. and it was a lot of regular bricks kind of mixed together, like I explained earlier. Um, it, gave, it gave it this very, I thought, you know, interesting build process. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, if I want to put this up on rebrickable or ideas or anything like that, I'll need to make some, you know, instructions or a digital version of it. That's the first time I made, uh, I got into studio. I started 
sourcing all those pieces. And I knew that a lot of those pieces were from the Batmobile tumbler set, the large uh, Batmobile tumbler set. Mm -hmm. and, and I got a copy of that on studio and just started, um, you know, taking that apart and messing around with it. It just kickstarted this thing where I rebuilt the entire mock, the physical mock of Knight Rider in studio. And then when I was building it in studio, I came across a lot of things. I like, oh, I can do this better. I can change this piece. I can change that technique, blah, blah, blah. So then I rebuilt it physically based off of the studio model that I had built. So I made it in studio kind of with the idea that, okay, now I'm going to have these instructions, but it's an instruction for a totally different car. So when I right. rebuilt that using Bricklink, like sourcing those parts, it looked very mm -hmm. weird. It, it didn't look right at all. And I realized there was a big disparity between the way something looks in studio and the way it looks in real life. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was the next a question I was going to have for you. It's very, it's, I think it's Go. very, it's a very subtle, indiscriminate kind of difference. And it's the kind of thing where, you know, when Lego makes a car and it's very disproportionate, but it still looks cute. It's got this kind of clunky yeah. aesthetic to it that is disproportionate <laughs> and not realistic, but it still works. Right. I think it's right. that little gray area in between things that are black and white. That's very hard to uh, replicate. But anyone who's worked with studio knows, you know, you can make stuff, you can cheat a lot. You can make stuff look better than it is. Uh, and that's mm -hmm. really my whole practice is like getting good at doing those little uh, tricks that kind of, you know, it's still Lego. It's still a build. It's still, you know, possible and like physically doable. But yeah, you can, you can have more creative control over your mock sure. if you're not really like... Um, yeah, if you're if you're looking at it more in terms of I'm duplicating a physical object and not, you know, trying to create it in a way where it's gonna look good from all angles or it's gonna translate even right. at any <clears throat> other angle. Right. Did you did where did you get a chance uh to see uh Rick's renders of his uh his video game, the the Spy Hunter one and um uh, Contra yesterday, uh the three oh, yeah. D render? Because you have you have oh, yeah. three dimensions, yeah, yeah, which is something that I I can I'm really really looking forward to to looking into yours because there that's the thing is that there there's there's some extreme techniques in uh in 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 some of your well a lot of your design um if if you really look at like I I pick out some of the strange ones because it has some of the needling that you've got in there like some of the greebling um that you use um when you're using horns or teeth and stuff like that, it just looks fantastic. It's just like- Thank the, you, the, the, thank you so much. I, the Greebling thing, that is something that I'm really a, a complete novice at. It's something I really, <laughs> really good admire. At. If you can do Greebling well and you know, just you have that light touch, you know, the the Steve McCory light touch where it's just enough yeah. and and no more, you know, that's, that's a masterful skill and like, you give it up for Rick. Uh, you know, I, I do too. It's it's very difficult to choose the right piece that is not going to overwhelm what you're trying to do there. Um, you're working with that kind of light relief. I was going to try to show people greebling because I, I have I have a small Millennium Falcon here. It doesn't have a lot of good greebling on it, but whatever. Um, it, you know, it's just the, the the little bitty parts on the uh, that that add to the design of a um, of a build. Here, I mean, I could pull pull up well, here. Actually. No, that one doesn't have a ton of here. I actually here actually um I was looking at this one earlier today. It has this this would be a good idea of some greebling right there. Like sort of, yeah, like with the text and the and, and the well, I mean I consider that one actually more of like a very standard mosaic. It it was so yeah, detailed yeah. that I had to just kind of resort to those quarter tiles. Yeah, the texture that you're throwing on some of these are uh is really that's the oh, you know what? <laughs> I have to be wearing that today. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> For those of you that aren't paying attention, that's the people that's uh, American Beauty right now. Um, but oh, I just happened upon that. That's super cool. We'll chat about that in a bit. Um, I, so just for a second, I, I noticed a comment. It's already gone, but um, I just wanted to give a, a shout out to Jordan Menace, who recreated the bad uh, Lego cover. Um, he's, uh, you know, I, that was oh. a really that was a really delightful thing for me uh, personally to see that someone 
actually took the time to deconstruct it and, and do it themselves, and he really did it justice. And I'm, I'm sure there might have been, he mentioned that there were just uh, differences in the way that the physical one went together versus the way the studio one looked. And I can totally imagine that that would be the case. And that's, and that's what I was going to say. So have you done any of these in uh, physical form, uh, the, the album covers? No? Because I'm, I'm just curious as to how, how they do come out, because um, some of the I mean, techniques in there seem... So there's a few album covers that I've done, like, for example, the uh, Diana one, Diana Ross, um, mm -hmm. is completely yep. black and white. And I, when I was making it, I realized this is simple enough where I might have the right pieces for it. It's possibly something that, you know, I could make physically and even improve on if I made it physically, because there are some things about it that I didn't really like. But right. I, I haven't really tried. No, it's just, I mean, the, the, people, if you, if you, if you, it's, it's, it, it can be easy to just kind of scroll past this and be like, oh, cool, that's neat, that's Lego. But what you got to do is you got to look into the details, these kind of details up here. Yeah, also, you got to look even right here, the kind, the kind of elements that are being used right there. It's really, it's really great. Um, ooh, going to attempt Thriller next. That'll be interesting. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, the 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 fact thriller you know, was one of the first ones I did. Diana was? No, no, thriller. It's like way down at the bottom. You oh, we might be here for for a little while. <laughs> um, so now, so six years ago, you got it. And, and now, did you have background with? Because because I know that the, the studio can be very daunting for people. Um, we talked about it with Rick last night. Um, and we'll talk. This is there's this kind of a theme going with this uh, this series of Don't Sweat the Lego. You know, there's we, we're talking a lot of digital stuff. But I'll get to that. I see questions down here. I'll get to those soon. And if you do have some more questions, please throw them down in the question bubble. I'm John with Back to Brick. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Adnan here. <coughs> Pardon me, Adnan here. Uh, UV UPV. Make sure to give him a follow. Um, I, I probably don't need to be telling. Him I'm probably already following you. Um, but um, unfortunately, um, in terms of the questions, um, I can't show the Knight Rider mock because it is currently ooh. Uh, not not in one piece. <laughs> oh, wait, yeah, you told me that's right. We, I remember when you, we were chatting about that <laughs> a yeah, while ago. I mean, I could show it to you, but it's yeah, it's 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 in pieces. I, I sort of revised the whole thing here. I put it up on Lego ideas, actually, and it hit. It almost got to the halfway mark, which is great. Um, but it's uh, expiring in like a month. I don't think it's going to make it. I think I can do a lot better now. And like I said, that whole process, that iterative process of building it in real life and then translating it in the studio and then building it in real life again, it, it really, like I feel it teaches me something each time. So I need to go through that process and really get it right. Because, yeah, I think until the mock is like, satisfying to your eye you know you're the discerning you're the most discerning person when it comes to your mock if you don't like the, anything about the way it looks fix it because it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks about it it doesn't matter like how many views or votes you get if you're not happy with it that's the thing that is in my opinion you know the most the critical thing that you need to fix right see well here's the thing <laughs> i asked you about doing something with this uh, a while ago for ideas and you're like you kind of sound like you'd given up on it i like it almost had expired already but it's past the halfway point and it's still alive why don't we still push for it i know that you said you think there's a better oh, because, version of it. because i like so the way i look at it it's i i mentioned at the same time that i saw this other really great night rider uh project on right. ideas and it hit 10k it, right away it just you know it was like amazing and um I recognized, I feel that, and you know, just a year or two ago, earlier than that, there was another Night Rider project that actually had a, a 10,000 uh, supports mm -hmm. as well. So right. I just felt, you know, if the product is good, like if, if, if the mock is good, people do mm -hmm. respond to it. And if there's something right. wrong with the mock, then, you know, it's fine. Like that's the way that it's gonna get better. And a lot of sure. ideas projects, I feel, go through this trial of fire where you, yeah, that's, that's like the closest I got to the original, uh, yeah, version of the, of the mod. 
Yeah. I'll show you something if you guys want. Scale on it. Awesome. The scale on it. Oh, you're going to get it. <laughs> um, hi, hi, everyone. Adnan's walking away to go grab the, the, the remnant of the, the Night Rider mock, I believe. I'm John with Back to Brick. I got patches, man. I forgot we're supposed to do a giveaway for patches. I forgot about that. There's so much crap going on. Sorry, guys. I'll do it again. I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll do one. <laughs> you are kidding. <laughs> wow. That's, but that is a great scale. That it's is huge. a fantastic. It's pretty big. Yeah. So what I That's... did was learning from this. This is like, this thing alone, I don't know, like 400, 500 pieces, right? Just that tail end? Technic. <laughs> Wow. Technic, and you just use a few pieces. It's not a big deal. Yeah, yeah. Well, I love what you so did this with the version front end. Two, this version two, I'm thinking full Technic. Like, why not? You know, like that's the kind of, that's a better utilization of that scale. You get that big car and make it super sturdy, very functional. Yeah, this was all based on aesthetics, just trying to make it look Right, yeah, and you, cool pieces. Well, you nailed, the front. You nailed the front end, and it looks difficult. It does. It, I mean, here I keep um, the front end here. It looks like you looks like you had a bunch going on there. God, it just I can hear it going. Vroom, vroom. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone point, who knows, <laughs> yeah. At one point, that, that version you showed with Ecto, um, at one point, I had all the electronics wired up. FX bricks for the win, uh, had the sound effects, had the lights, you know, had the works. It was great. You had, you had it all rigged up, man. Oh yeah. No. There's, a video, there's a video in my feed somewhere of the light bar with the headlights. I mean, it was, it was pretty cool. And again, um, we're going to get there. Like eventually Lego, hopefully will make this like awesome electronic kit which has even the dashboard somehow lights up or something that would be amazing you know just yeah that guy what are you talking about that was all hidden <laughs> why did we <laughs> you know it's no matter what uh medium in which i work whoa Hi. <laughs> that's the hood that's, right there. Wow, that's dude. That is a very pretty, big scale. Wow. Yeah, it's huge. It's very, pretty big, but wow. it needed to be because it's hiding all of this. That's your brick, <laughs> FX brick, battery pack. <laughs> yes. You know, the whole deal. Wow! 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 Dude, holy cow! I what? What? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we need to we need to remedy this. <laughs> Cause that's amazing. That's that's just. I mean, I want it so I badly right now. You know, there's like a lot of people out there who are probably watching all of this and saying like, "Oh my god," because <laughs> there's amazing Technic large scale car creators. There's like, you know, well, people, dude. people who are doing insane stuff with. And I've built a few myself. In fact, I wanted to show you guys. You, my favorite Technic builder out there right now. I'll show you. But I'm 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 like I'll do this guy. It's well, just stuff it's... like this thing, right? Oh yeah! Wow! Yes! Yes! You know, choose is it choose that he does some amazing stuff as well. Yeah, it's look like, at that. The eyes of that entirely, thing. as far as I can tell, well, mostly, um, it's an alternate build for the Porsche, and oh, that's sure. even more uh, impressive to me that you can take pieces that were made made for a completely different car and do this. And that's exactly, the, well, I'm, and I'm not trying to do any kind of like <clears throat> self-promotion or anything, but I want to do the rebrickable build. I want someone to, you know, like, you know how people take in, um, you know, they, they, they rebrick, like what, uh, um, uh, Kim, Kim Plata, uh, who rebricks everything is amazing. Uh, all of the mocks or all of the modulars, but I want to have like a rebrickable, uh, uh, category competition or whatever for people to oh, yeah. do just so exactly yeah. yeah yeah exactly exactly well I, i'm not trying like i said i'm not trying to do 
the the, the promo here no, on this. But, but this, dude, I'm a big proponent of what, that. Well, that and is. you did do to the did do the design work on it, so I guess it is. We are here to having this chat. So, uh, but this guy, are you familiar with Alexander Rossier? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, the Panther. Oh, dude, look at this thing. Come on it's, now. It's nuts. <laughs> like people have an unbelievable handle on Technic, and a lot of them. What blows my mind is you can do Technic in studio as well, but that's about. 10 times more difficult than just building right. the regular bricks the way I am. So the fact that you can make all of this physically, then tra transcribe it in the studio to make instructions, I mean, it, it just blew my mind. Although this particular model, the instructions were just photographs, basically, and you figured it out kind of as you went along, and that also right. worked. But uh, yeah, man, um, I think this is a whole different side of uh, mock making that I'm very curious about and I'm just getting into, but I do mm -hmm. not claim to be an expert in and I don't, yeah, I, I, I understand my limitations, I feel, in that department. Well, it seems like, but it seems like you're getting a pretty, pretty solid grasp as you go along. It seems like your learning curve is not super steep. The more you do, the more, you know, the more you're going to get out of it. And I, of course. the studio, the, the album covers were a studio experiment for me. Right. It was like, what can I do every day that is just going to make um, a, a little something and I can learn something from the experience. And as mm -hmm. time goes by, I think with anything, you just, you know, you build up that. Um, like Rick Brickham's uh, post last night, we had someone mentioned, you just build up that Rolodex of pieces sure. in your head. You have the inventory. You start understanding the program. You start being able to locate stuff. Mm -hmm. And that uncomplicates a lot of uh, the challenges, but it creates new ones. Exactly. Which is, I mean, it can be very frustrating, but also very rewarding at the same time. Um, now, so you, you, you went into the albums and that just kind of, they kind of struck, you know, right? And, and you, here we are now, right? Um, someone mentioned, I saw this, uh, thank you, yeah, this mug, yeah, it's pretty awesome. I got to start designing it. <laughs> The Lego pieces do fit on it, which is awesome. Um, not extremely well, but, you know, well enough. Um, you, oh, I should have brought, I'm bringing the builds up next time. It came with these three little builds. I did a live stream on my, my personal page because I didn't want people to unfollow us because I was doing on Lego -like builds. You were there, weren't you? Were you there? Of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I witnessed this, uh, this, you know, heresy firsthand. I was like, whoa. Oh, yeah, you trying to drop doing? test today. No, no, I'm just kidding, man. It's all good. I, I told you, build what you love. Like, enjoy it. You I'm know, you learn, yeah. you learn something Agreed. from uh, building that, uh, from those instructions. It's all good. People, don't get upset, but I, my wife made me awfully curious, so she had me pick up some of these dollar store things. I'm going to see how they work. Those I haven't things, opened right? them I've been here for months. I haven't opened them. Um, but, uh, so. Whatever works. Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, uh, they, John, they, I will Actually, mention dollar. What? Sorry, what sorry to cut you off. Nope. Um, go, since go. you're looking for something to do on your uh, mug, you can try. You can pretty easily replicate your logo. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> my pet. I didn't even think of that. Oh my god, that would be pretty cool. I don't know. I just it seems self-serving, but it seems really cool. It is black. I think, I think too. It's, it's the right place for for oh, your, oh, your logo. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. I might have an afternoon project. <laughs> just saying, awesome. just saying, you know, you asked for, you asked for those uh, designs that were easy to try. I got to show, I gotta show people here uh, the, what we're talking about. If, if people don't see it, I haven't seen, my, which most people here probably haven't. I don't, I try not to promote my, my, my personal stuff too, too much on here, but add none. <laughs> Just hit me up with this logo one day. It says Blockhead on there if you can, if it's not transcribing very well. Um, but it's just so dope. <laughs> and he also gave me this one out of white. It's just so cool. <laughs> I'm so stoked, Chad. Uh, I yeah, okay. I guess that's what I'm doing. Thank you. Great idea. Of course. Oh my god, brilliant that's idea. Sir. I'm, I'm, I, I had a question. I still remember the question though. <laughs> I I started with saying you're doing the albums and then took off a boom. But I saw a question in here or a statement 
um, from someone, and I can't recall who it was. I apologize. They might not even be in here anymore. But they mentioned about doing movie posters. Wow. Um, yeah, you know, it's it's funny. Uh, I don't know who it was who said that. I haven't been following the comments at all, but... I saw it, was... and it was a while ago, and I mean, I pull it. But it's oh, a great well, idea. No, it, it totally is. And honestly, to, to be frank, um, I rethought, like, it's been almost a year since I've been doing album covers. Um, and at some point in the project, you know, I rethought it, and I was like, oh, you know, should I keep those going? What's going to be next, you know? And movie posters was literally the first thought that popped in my head. And I'm, as as you can probably tell, like, I'm really into music, but I'm more into movies. So if I started down that path, Dude, that I think it would yield fun. some really interesting stuff. Well, and, and, the, and the passion would be right there, too. I mean, not that you don't have the passion for the music as well. Hello, John, by the way. I didn't even see that you had popped in. I'm sorry if I missed you there. Uh, I'm trying to find this whoever. I think it was a while ago, man. Um, but it's yeah, I mean, I mean, speaking of pop, well, yeah. I want to give them credit. Um, but speaking of pop culture, you know, like, well, of course you could, I mean, think about doing a, a breakfast club, uh, you know, poster. Oh, of course, that's the first thing that comes to mind. Chicago kid from the 80s. Um, but, you know, it's endless, right? I mean, it's endless oh, yeah. with, 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 it, with it albums. And like, but you can then, you could hop back and forth at any time you want. <laughs> that's true. Although... I think over time, you know, the I've been really just kind of paring down Instagram to basically just be about the album covers. And, right. you know, I just rebranded to kind of just, you know, uh, inhabit that role a little bit more, sure. uh, you know, commit, co commit to it. And right. I feel um, it's something that I would like to do in addition, perhaps. But, yeah, uh, I wouldn't maybe transition completely out of this. I feel there's a certain... Maybe Jordan sort of... Menace is the one movie paper posters? Boom. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. So the first one I would have gone for if, uh, and I probably will, is Scarface. Like, do Scarface. Oh, okay. that's, oh that's... A... That's like the first... one of those iconic movie posters that's been parodied like a billion times and stuff, but <laughs> I just want to see it in like... Mine, mine would be Apocalypse Now. I would, I would love to see Apocalypse Now done. Oh, that's my, that's my all-time. You know, that, that's like, my dark moodiness. It's, it's just interesting. Like again, you get into this certain debate of where, you know, where do you go? Where do you end? No, there's, there's good movies, and then there's good movie posters. Right. Just like there's right. good music, and there's good album art, and you should, I think be aware i mean not that i don't uh, not that i'm saying like i've done like only the best artists or anything like i'm not a music a critic or anything like that i'm just doing the music that i know and you know the album art that i'm familiar with but yeah there's there's great albums that have unfortunately very lego uh incompatible or incompatible mm -hmm. covers and then there's right kind of mediocre albums that would look great in Lego and I'm just kind of like, oh, sure. it's wrong. Yeah. Wrong. But then I'm you get kidding. judged. <laughs> oh my God, he's listening to that? <laughs> uh, uh, I listen to every album while I make it. That's one thing that has not awesome. I love rediscovering old stuff and a, a lot of my music is basically just, you know, older. It's classic. It's not contemporary. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a, uh, it's just my, my morning meditation stuff now. It's part of my routine. I love it. I'm glad it's resounding with the rest of the world. Yeah, no. I mean, you've, you've, you've clearly struck a chord with many people. I mean, I, I haven't checked your page recently in terms of numbers. Whoa, boy. You're about to hit 16,000. Happy. Wow, 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 wow. Congratulations. That's I phenomenal. Mean, it's just nuts. Like, I, yeah. I well, definitely do, there's a lot of more talented builders out there who deserve that much more than I. I just happen to pick a really popular subject that, again, everyone, you know, <clears throat> is going to go for. There's no shame in that, man. There's no shame in that. You you found what you're good at, you know. So other people need to find what they're good at. You know whether it's a niche like that, or whether it's you know building castles or you know extending their Mario sets or whatever it is, you know. Um, you have yours and it struck the right way and it struck the right way because you're a talented builder and you're a talented uh, computer 
designers. So, well, I'm speaking of which, one question. Um, uh, he says Fidel Castro. If I, I'm thinking what I thought originally was Rage Against the Machine, of course. Um, that was my initial thought. Uh, I, with uh, Tom Morello. Like he, for, for the hat. Oh, for the hat. Someone asked about it. Um, but someone said Fidel Castro in there. Yeah. Right. It, I'm just, there's the Cuban revolution. I think it's, um, it's pro it could be referred back to a lot of different regimes or are, areas, but, but it's actually Chinese. It's from Hong Kong. It, it is. Right. Right. Uh, it's a red, the, the red star. <laughs> um, but uh, the, the, was I going to say, I was going to say something about uh, Fidel Castro. I can't remember what it was. doesn't matter. Maybe they were referring to how you look. I mean, the beard, the beard probably <laughs> sells it a little bit. I just need a cigar, you know. <laughs> a Phenomenal. Cigar. <laughs> Phenomenal. That's good. Um, so, uh, what, so how long do these take you to, to do, by the way? The, the album cover you said it's your morning meditation how long is that meditation uh it really depends on the album mostly like five to six hours um it some what? some albums have just kind of gone on and on and on sure. like there's a lot of nitpicking and like oh at the end i'm not happy with it right. one thing that i think maybe a lot of uh people who don't work with studio may not re realize is that a lot of times you're building blind, at least for me, I get the feeling sometimes, I don't actually know what it's gonna look like until I render it. Right. I, I can go down a rabbit hole of like, mm -hmm. and make, and it looks great on screen, but then when you render it, it's like, oh no, yeah. that's not gonna work. So yeah, how long some are you, albums can go longer. How long are your renders taken on yours? Oh, so I render at a much lower res, just oh, to yes. kind of get um, general yeah. pictures. And then I'll I'll do different things to you know if I need to uh, look at it in a higher resolution and stuff before and sure. it's mostly color correction and shadow bouncing and weird things like that like I'm I'm like I said more interested in like creating this illusion or ma playing this magic trick and uh, I want to get it perfect so no one can kind of tell how it's happening. Right. Well, I, I think you do a pretty pretty phenomenal job of doing that. Um, you definitely uh, tantalize the eye, and uh, and stimulate the senses. So that's that's uh, all that one can hope from art, you know. Um, sure. And that's what defines art, you know. You, you, you your senses are stimulated, you know. Uh, so and you do that with uh, every post. Uh, it's a it's a it's a feed stopper, if you ask me. So. Thank you. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, I I know I always know when I see an ad non posting. <laughs> There it is. Awesome. New one. Uh, so that being said, um, we're going to be going a little bit deeper further into the studio uh, designs uh, with Ed and I going forward uh, in the three episodes. We're going to get a little bit more technical um, with these designs, get a little bit more hands-on. I'm going to let you in there. We're going to go deep. We're going to go deep. We're going to go Hughes, man. <laughs> I mean, Not John. But we're we're going to shake things up in a way that people aren't ready for. I'm ready to rock the world, baby. <laughs> awesome. It. Well, we've got you coming up uh, here. Let's see. We, a week from today, same time, right? We're doing um, episode we're two. Yep, yep. Episode two, again, a week from today. So that is what? The 17th. Uh, we'll be here again. Hello, your Lego feed. What's up, bud? Um you will be here showing us the, the, the more technical side of your builds in studio. And for those of you that do want to follow along with the studio, highly recommend downloading it. If you have the, the means to do so on your PC, it's through BrickLink. And you can follow along with some of these builds. I know that Matthias is also going to be uh, having us walk along on all of his builds, which is going to be super cool too. So, um, Adnan, I will be talking to you 8,000 more times later today. Um, I'm sure. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yep. And I look forward to, to getting into the, seeing how the sausage is made with you, sir. Well, you don't eat sausage probably, I imagine. <sighs> I, my know, references. I used to eat meat. I'm a vegetarian now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it's funny how you don't really lose these food references. Like I still, you know. <laughs> I was I'm still I was bringing home the bacon, you know. 
I was a vegetarian for 17 years, so I was always the one that were people would be making those references, and they'd be like, "Oh, you know," I'm like, "No, it's cool." But now I'm the guy who like, sorry. <laughs> it's just I was I was vegan for eight of those years, by the way. Oh, oh wow, what, that, that's impressive. That's a lifestyle. That's not a diet, man. That's a lifestyle. Yeah. I mean, Whoa. That's a whole different show. <laughs> yeah. That's that's a whole different show. I think that's 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 one for you know next time. Yeah, that's for my. That's gonna be for my my adults only Lego uh, live streams. <laughs> that sounds not good. Don't sweat um, the Lego recipes. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna get weird. All right, <laughs> I love it. Um, well, sir, I will I will chat with you here in a little bit, but we will see you here again uh, next week, a week from today. Make sure you're following uh, Adnan up there, UVUPV. And thank you so, so much, sir. Thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for your brilliance. And man, I look forward to working more with you in the future. <laughs> pleasure, Matt. Awesome. Be hey, well, sir. You. All right, you as well. I will talk to you soon. All right, bye-bye. So uh, moving forward here, oh, you can hit the uh, X. Ooh, there we go. Uh, moving forward here, we had episode two series two with adnan here uv upv what a great guy i am i'm super stoked uh to, to have three more episodes with him he's such a such a fun man and uh yeah and uh and he and i <laughs> we chat quite a bit it's fun we have fun so i really appreciate it hey thank you so much rick and by the way check out rick's uh rick brickham follow him he was episode one last night uh, i posted the, that that episode yesterday and it's i think it's in our stories right now um so check that out he did a fantastic job last night we did a little bit of uh, the q a he walked us through his mocks uh his digital builds um brilliant both of them just brilliant designers i'm very honored to be able to uh be able to sit here and chat with with all of these uh these brilliant designers and speaking of which tomorrow tuesday here let me get to let me get to the photo aspect of these things i don't i don't know how to get to my own page um tomorrow tuesday 4 p.m i think that's the time right i wrote them down um my notes yep i got my notes uh 4 p.m yes billy billy yes b underscore M underscore four. Billy is going to be walking us through some amazing uh, customization of mini figs. I'm super stoked here. Let me show you these things he's got. He has this new one. Oh man, here look. Look at these things, what he does. There are a lot of them are military and he does these just amazing. What here, here's, let me show you this. This one's my favorite. I love this one so much. <laughs> So he does these customizations of the minifix, and he's going to walk us through that process. Uh, it's super cool. Uh, we're going to chat. We're going to get to know each other. I'm really looking forward to it. He also happens to do the Bricks and Banter podcast, which is really awesome. They do chats with uh, people that do customizations uh, in the Lego community, the, the War and Diorama community. It's super awesome. It's such a niche uh, corner of Lego community that's not really... I mean, it's big, it's huge. Don't get me wrong, but it's not in the in the in that, not necessarily everyone's uh, live share or their feet. It's cool. There's some really, really amazing, talented builders out there that do the Warren dioramas, um, and that also do um, the uh, the customization of the minifix. So we're gonna dive into that. We're gonna chat about his uh, podcast, Bricks and Banter, and that is at four o'clock tomorrow. Um, that's four o'clock my time, Pacific. Seven o'clock. Toast by the Lego recipes was great. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Uh, it's going to be uh, 7 o'clock Eastern, and we're going to chat with Billy. It's going to be fun. Oh, and by the way, a little cross promo, if you will, tomorrow afternoon before Don't Sweat the Lego Technique Series 2, Episode 3. I'm going to do a little talking brick right here on this page with none other than Tim of TK Bricks. Yep, 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 yep. We're going to chat about his Star Wars craziness. Amazing craziness. Here, let me show you this stuff. Like, come on. You want to you want to see you want to see brilliance. This is this is what this guy doing right here. He's see these. That's what he's doing in studio. Yeah, see that. That's the Kessel Run that he. So he built the Kessel Run uh, mock out of real bricks, and it's double the size of the Millennium Falcon. Um, do you see us? Yeah, yeah, double the size. This is this page right here. Gentleman has about 132,000 followers. If you're not following him, 
I don't know who you are at this point. TK Bricks, give him a follow. He is going to be coming to talk brick with me. We're going to be talking brick. Uh, Tim's a great guy. Phenomenal man in the community, uh, the Lego community. He helps out a ton with uh, with builders. Uh, people send in their uh, their mocks for him to do reviews of, and he man, he does some amazing job. And he also uh, remixes some builds into different colors. I, I posted one today. Um, he took Eric Scruffy uh, Brick Herder. <laughs> he took his uh, his Razor Crest and he turned it into. A Christmas razor crest. It's so dope, right? So we're going to chat with him tomorrow morning at 1 p.m. my time. It's 3 p.m. to his time because he's in uh, Central Standard Time. So we'll chat with him then. And that, so that means it's 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, until then, uh, which for Don't Sweat the Lego Technique, that is, we will have Billy tomorrow, 4 o'clock. I will see you then for those episodes. Uh, and then, of course, like I said, Tim. Thanks again, buddy. Thank you, Adnan. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out. Really appreciate it. And please be sure to check out the other uh, the other episodes of Don't Sweat the Lego Technique Series 1. Uh, and then, of course, Rick's from last night. We have them in our videos pop-down feed. There's Talk and Break and there's Don't Sweat the Lego Technique. You can find all those videos there. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a fun one. I'm looking forward. We got Billy coming up uh, tomorrow. And then uh, we got Kate, Brick Huntress. Uh, yeah, what's up, Jacob? I didn't, I, I didn't know you were in here. I'm sorry. How was going, buddy? I, maybe I said hello to you earlier. Maybe I forgot you were in here. Um, but uh, we got Brick Huntress then on Wednesday. Uh, we're going to be doing 6 p.m. She's my time zone, which is great. She's Kelly Bartlett had my time zone last time. Kate's in Bend right down the road, you know, five, six hours down the road. Um, and then Thursday, we got Matthias out there in Austria. He's going to walk us through from beginning to end studio. He's We're going to click in pull down file, open new, boom, start clicking away. So make sure if you've got a, a computer, a laptop, um, download uh, a studio through BrickLink and you can walk, work along. Matthias has got it set up. We did a little, uh, a little pre-call uh, yesterday to see how it works out and he's got it set up so that we can follow along as he builds. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, and then on Friday, we've got Fleur Watkins doing – uh, a little bit of her fantastic design work uh, with architecture, her mock work. And, of course, uh, we're going to chat about her her stints on, hey, thank you, buddy. Uh, we're, and we're going to be talking with uh, we're Jacob soon, too. Uh, I'll get to that. Um, but uh, that's it. We'll, we'll talk later. <laughs> um, he does all of the, uh, uh, these, <laughs> the Star Wars ships. He turns them into wood, Lego wood. It's amazing. Go check it out. Lego woodish. They're so cool. The, the Stark image of course is slave one the way that you have that photographed is beautiful um and of course built is beautiful as well so then floor watkins she's going to talk about lego masters australia as well with us her uh her her stint on there uh she, i think she came in third place if i'm not mistaken second runner up if i'm not mistaken so we're going to chat about that and then of course on saturday we're going to talk with uh alex about that's that right there see it the Home Alone set. Can can you see it right there? Right there. That, that thing right there. Yeah. Oh, you finished the El Camino. Awesome, Miguel. Good work, buddy. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, Jacob. Of course, you do great work. Always. Um, I'm really stoked to chat with you as well. <laughs> An awesome woodworking area as well. <laughs> it looks really fun. And good music choice. Um. So, yeah. Uh, I guess... Uh, I guess I don't, oh wait, I said Alex, right? We're going to talk about, you know, the Home Alone set. We're going to do the, from when he thought of the idea to when it became the set that's sitting right here, right? We're going to chat about all that. He went to Billings, uh, the, he went to Lego House, they, the, the whole nine. He was sending me photos while he was, <laughs> he was uh, partying up and building and I was just like, dude, crazy. So, so, so very excited. And he also just did the Polar Express uh, set that looks fantastic. Uh, it is, uh, it is brick built and it's up on Lego Ideas. I think it's over two or 3,000 supporters already, maybe more than that at this point. And it's only been up for a week. So that one's going to get made again. He's just nailing the ideas out of the park. So we're going to chat with him about that on Saturday. And then I guess until uh, until Tuesday, tomorrow, when we're chatting with Billy, until then, you know, don't sweat the Lego technique, okay? Bye-bye.